I think mine would be very brief. We've talked and talked about this drought. Now we're talking about floods in, uh, in uh, Lake Victoria. We talk about uh, uh, 3,000 people being displaced this morning in parts of Nyanza. We talked about flash floods uh, in, um, in Turkana the last few days and other parts of the country. So sometimes you stand and ask yourself, are we talking sense here? And what are we talking about? You know, from one extreme to the other. But these are the realities of Mother Nature that we live with. The drought situation in this country is real. It's still here with us. It will be with us for some months to come. Uh, but again, people dispute about numbers. Is it three and a half million? Is it five million? For me, I said it, it's irrelevant. In this context, people say, have people died or not died? Again, today, people are saying people haven't died. For me, we passed that stage. There are Kenyans who are in need of food aid, and food aid like yesterday and not today. The uh, initiative that was started about a few weeks ago on Kenyans for Kenya is still ongoing. Uh, but Kenya Red Cross had launched an appeal, in fact, in January this year to declare drought disaster in this country. I think matters were heightened when recently the BBC went to the Dab and saw the influx of Somali refugees coming into Kenya and seeing their conditions and then the world woke up. But uh, we told the world and we told Kenya as early as December last year because the weathermen had warned us. The reality today is that the greater part of northern Kenya, the arid and semi-arid parts of Kenya from Turkana, East Pokot, West Pokot, uh, North Baringo, uh, areas of um, um, Moyale, Marsabit, Isiolo, Mandera, Wajir, Garissa, Tana River, parts of Kilifi, parts of Kwale, parts of Kieni, Nyeri, Marag parts of Maragua, and many other parts of this country have been, people have been affected by this drought. And it's been said to be one of the worst ones in the last 60 or so years. So definitely there is a need out there. The general food distribution is being done by the government of Kenya through World Food Program and other donor governments. There are certain districts where about 3.25 million Kenyans are being assisted. On the other hand, what we have been doing through this recent initiative of Kenyans for Kenya and Kenya Red Cross is we've been targeting largely uh, on children that are in school in these arid semi-arid parts of Kenya, very nomadic and who uh, are not able to uh, afford to have food at home. The pipeline from World Food Program and others had been slowed over the last few months. And then there were the children that were malnourished, elderly men and women that are malnourished, and pregnant and lactating mothers is the group that we've been concentrating. Over the last uh, three weeks now, we've dispatched 450 metric tons of Unimix to various parts of this country, to the greater part of Turkana, 150 tons, to northeastern Wajir, Mandera, Ejara, Garissa, 150 tons, and to Moyale, Marsabit, Isiolo, similar amount of 150 tons. We've been doing this on a weekly basis. We've now gotten more support from other ordinary Kenya, like the cereal millers, and now we have one tomorrow from uh, Prime Bank and other uh, Rotarians and the, and the Hindu community of Kenya that will be flagging up some food to go to other parts of this country, in Ukambani, in Tana River, and, and um, areas like Mbere, Gachoka, we, uh, we're looking at areas like, uh, as I said, Kieni and even Moranga. So I would just say that uh, the response has been overwhelming. For Barclays Bank, we have over the years been collaborating with them and we've got it even as, as early as January this year when we declared our first drought emergency, we got over 12 million Kenya shillings from Barclays here and, um, and already we used a part, large part of that money for water tracking in February and March and April this year before the long rains. The predictions are the next rains are also said to be that they won't be sufficient. So this problem would go on with us until around March next year when we expect to get then hopefully good rains and we would probably then overcome the water stress. Especially now the month of August and September, we've been inundated with requests for water tracking in areas like Tana River, areas like Garissa. And when I say Tana River, it means Bangal, which is about 100 kilometers from the river because people believe everyone is just close to the river. Maybe we should do like Sudan and, and um, Egypt where everyone lives along the river Nile and that becomes your, your, your basic survival. And, and maybe for some of the pastoralist communities during the drier season, we have to find long-term solution. So we are saying also in terms of the long-term solution, we are, while looking at the emergency phase now on food, health and water, 
hopefully with some of the funds raised through the Kenyans for Kenya initiative would be used to look at mid to long term in terms of uh, agriculture and in terms of alternative methods of farming like drip irrigation is what we are looking at. Not knowing how much money will have been collected if we do achieve our budget or I mean our estimates of one billion what we target we need to we need to raise and largely tomorrow and on the 27th uh, when tomorrow we have the SMEs and other corporates who are going to come on board hopefully at Serena between 12 and 2 o'clock tomorrow to have one more push from the corporate Kenya and then next Saturday the 27th is when we'll have the final uh, event uh, for Kenyans for Kenya where we'll be having many artists and ordinary Kenyans coming to Huru Park to partake in an event that we hope then we say thank you to Kenyans but at the same time maybe use the opportunity to further raise resources to, to then complete our campaign. So I just like to thank the management of Barclays Bank for always being on the forefront and every time we've had an emergency through your staff, through your local branches and through the, the, the board and the management you've been generous. We know you've also been getting funds through your headquarters uh, in London and we cannot thank you enough for also the confidence that you have placed on Kenya Red Cross and in particular where you know normally your headquarter funds would go to the British Red Cross but I'd like to thank both the chairman and the managing director for having had that confidence in fighting to get those resources direct to Kenya and to Kenya Red Cross. So we just want to say thank you for again for calling us here to come and receive this donation which I'm sure will be announced by the leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, thank you very much, Abbas, and uh, everybody who's joined us uh, this morning. We're very grateful for your time. First of all, I want to thank many Kenyans who have, through the initiatives, uh, dubbed Kenyans for Kenyans, uh, who have contributed immensely to the famine situation that we've had in Kenya in the last uh, month or so. And, and also, most of the corporate entities in Kenya who have played a significant role uh, that have, you know, gotten us to where we are in terms of raising the amount of funds that Red Cross is now working with to help some of the drought situations in the country. So I can't thank enough all those people who, for the first time, I think, have really come out, um, you know, in really big force to try and help the situation that we've experienced here in Kenya. I think uh, my special thanks, though, go to Kenya Red Cross uh, for spearheading this initiative. They have been the voice of the helpless in the country. And Barclays and Kenya Red Cross have worked together for many years to try and see how the initiatives that they are leading uh, you know, is going to make a difference in the lives of those people who cannot help themselves. And in particular to the Secretary General Abbas, who has, who have done significant amount of, uh, I would say, challenging, uh, be it the government, the private sector, or indeed uh, some of the activities that he's done to attract the attention of Kenyan individuals to get us to this level. I was in Turkana over the weekend, uh, on Saturday and Sunday, to try and see for myself, uh, experience whether the pictures that Abbas and others have brought to the Kenyan screens are actually real. Um, and I can confirm that what I have seen, you know, has just taken me aback in terms of the urgent need that people have. It's, as Abbas mentioned, interesting dilemma that as people are dying of hunger on one side, others are being swept off by floods. But the reality is children, the elderly, and, and many people are still in dire need of help. And our role as one of the leading financial services company here is to work with very reputable organizations like Kenya Red Cross uh, to try and deal with the situation that we have seen uh, here. So ours is to really just make our contribution, like many other corporate entities have done in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, we are very excited to be in partnership with Kenya Red Cross, as we always have done, and we will continue to do so because we have a lot of confidence in the work that uh, not only the head office here does, but also the regional staff, people on the ground are actually doing. 
Uh, finally, before I introduce the next speaker, I just want to basically mention the symbolic nature of why we are doing this function in this branch. One of the biggest thing around our social responsibility agenda is the amount of work our colleagues and employees do in supporting the activities of many people in our communities. And we have a program called Shilling for Shilling where every shilling that our staff raise in dealing with a specific community agenda, the bank actually matches that 100%. So for every shilling that is raised, the bank actually matches. And as part of the announcements that we will make today, I'm very pleased to say that our colleagues in Barclays uh, will have contributed as part of that overall contribution that will be announced later, uh, a figure of five million Kenya shillings that our colleagues in Barclays have actually taken time, done many things, whether it's skipping lunches, selling handkerchiefs, and doing many other things that if you are customers, you know, going down at the branch here, a lot of our colleagues are working with them to try and see how they can help. So really doing this event in this branch is just an acknowledgement of the great work that they are doing uh, in supporting some of these uh, initiatives. So mine is to say how pleased we are to be part of this big journey, Kenyans for Kenyans, that Kenya Red Cross uh, and Gina Dean uh, Corporation have actually uh, launched and initiated, that many people have come on board. And, and I hope that many more will continue to come on and that in the future, some of these issues that are being started today will hopefully come to an end through some long-term sustainable solutions, which I have no doubt will in a different forum be discussed and debated uh, so that we don't see hungry faces that we have seen on our screens in the last few months. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And I now uh, ask uh, a representative, who should I ask? Huh? Yeah, a representative of the Media Association, uh, Paul Onyaga, to come and say a few words. Thank you. I guess, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to keep all the protocols short, uh, there's not much else to add uh, beyond what Elena said and what Abbas had said earlier. Um, media uh, has been on the forefront of this uh, particular uh, challenge that our country continues to face. And um, some of the pictures have been a little unpleasant. Uh, we've shown some very unpleasant and gory pictures. Uh, but I think with these pictures did need to be shown so that Kenyans would come to reality of what we're facing. Yes, as uh, I think Elena said, and I think Abbas, that we live in a world of irony, that at one part of the country it's raining, another part of the country uh, it's particularly dry. So, and yet the people who are hungry and the people who have a lot of food, the separation in terms of kilometers is likely to be at less than a thousand kilometers. So it's ironical. So it points to the challenges, it points to policy making, it points to the uh, sort of real long-term planning that our country needs to engage itself in. Um, hopefully now with the constitution in place, um, it is critical that as Kenyans we move forward rapidly identifying and prioritizing what needs to be done. But as Maslow's hierarchy has it, food, shelter, and clothing are basic necessities of life. And Kenyans will not actualize until the very basic necessities of life are actually met. So on behalf of the media fraternity in this country, uh, we are not doing anybody a favor. These Kenyans who have been passing out and dying and going hungry are part of Kenyans. The media is part of Kenya. And um, you know, to really congratulate the many, many silent heroes and heroines who've been out there in Kenya helping in small ways to really try and um, you know, come round to this particular challenge that our country faces right now. But as we move forward and as the elections uh, ever don't draw near, we hope and assume very strongly uh, that uh, the new leadership uh, that is likely to take on to this country this new leadership must be able to prioritize and really put the, uh, the essence and agenda setting. As the chairman, I think, of Barclays was saying a little earlier to me in private talk, that he is a little tired of having to come year in, year out, akichangisha um, pesa in one form or the other. I think we need to put very sustainable thinking in place. And Aiden, uh, to congratulate you and uh, Barclays Bank for really going forward to really 
give sustainable solutions that um, uh, will help this country move forward. And so that the food, shelter, and clothing are things that uh, we must now take for granted sooner or later. This country is blessed with enough resources. It is how these resources are being meted out. It's how these resources are being shared out uh, to make sure that uh, every one of us uh, doesn't go hungry. It is sad and unfair and really almost inhuman to see some of those pictures. These are fellow Kenyans. These are Kenyans who belong to this country. They are no less Kenyans. Uh, those uh, kids, those mothers uh, we've cited in the recent past. Barclays, uh, you are to be congratulated. Well done. Uh, I'm given to understand today it's about sustainable uh, ways and means of making sure that our country uh, does not go hungry. And uh, Aiden, congratulations, the chairman of Barclays. Well done. And the team of Barclays, um, it's nice to see what you're doing. Uh, keep it up. And on behalf of the media, we shall keep the flag uh, flying very high to make sure this matter is brought to every Kenyan's living room. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wanyaga. Mr. Thank you, Nuru. <coughs> the Kenya Red Cross Secretary General, uh, Mr. Bas Gule, Media Owners Association, ably represented by my friend uh, Paul and Patrick, the BBK colleagues, and here allow me to mention in particular Paul Kitemu. Is Paul in? Paul Kitemu and Mayor Mbogwa uh, from Mount Kenya region. Is uh, Mayor in? Okay. And partners uh, from the media as well as the other stakeholders. As part, of our uh, as part of our citizenship agenda, we believe that sustainability to us as a bank means that we have to participate in providing sustainable solutions to problems and challenges that face the communities in which we do business. Paul mentioned about my private conversation with him about the need for us to really find long-term solutions to some of these challenges. But the fact of the matter is that we cannot sit back and watch and see families being disseminated, children going hungry. So the immediate needs of our brothers and sisters that are currently the victims of the drought uh, uh, situation must be addressed. And that is why we are here this morning. Early this year, uh, we were debating this issue with Abbas. At that time, the debate on was whether we should declare the challenges uh, in some parts of our country as a national disaster. The view we took as a bank was that national disaster or no national disaster, we have to respond. Because emergencies of this nature requires immediate response, while we actually think about how we can manage uh, the solutions, both in terms of the medium and long term. What we see as a paradox in terms of some parts of the country getting flooded and others having no rain at all is really as a result of the climate change phenomenon. Climate change as a phenomenon is a reality, and I think it's high time that we really put aside the lofty scientific arguments about what causes uh, you know, climate change and what does not cause climate change. The fact of the matter is that climate change is a reality and we have to manage it. Fortunately for us, with uh, the improved scientific uh, methods, especially in terms of uh, uh, climate change simulations, we can predictably uh, prepare ourselves for some of these challenges. And in effect, then, we can be able to mitigate uh, some of these uh, uh, challenges by undertaking some uh, reasonable measure of forward planning. It is for this reason that we in Barclays uh, believe that um, in the medium to long term, we have to find uh, some you know, practical solutions on how to manage uh, what is clearly a part of our lives at the moment. Our Focus, therefore, 
is not just going to be on fixing the immediate in terms of the emergency measures that you're talking about, but we are also going to be concerned about the sustainability in terms of the solutions that can carry this country forward in terms of managing these challenges. I think it is in this context that our partnership with the Red Cross and other uh, stakeholders will definitely go beyond fixing the immediate, but also talking about how do we uh, you know, improve agricultural production in the areas that are affected. For a long time, we have been depending on rain-fed agriculture. Now, climate change is disrupting that, and we have, therefore, to think about uh, innovative ways of um, uh, continuing with our agricultural production in a manner that is sustainable and in a manner that makes it possible not for us to be wholly dependent on rain. There is a study that was undertaken by Barclays in 2009 which clearly indicated that climate change as a phenomenon is negatively impacting on agriculture and is negatively impacting on other aspects of Kenya's economy as indeed is the case with the situation in other parts of the world. So to us really, um, uh, fixing of the immediate uh, challenge is a priority, but more importantly is finding the long-term solutions to this problem. And this is why whenever I meet my friend uh, Abbas Gule, the debate never ends. Sustainability, sustainability, sustainability. But more importantly, at human level really, food security is critical. And it is not fair that a family should be getting its food supply through a, an external source. That dependency actually is a violation of an individual's dignity. And that's why the long-term solution must be in making it possible for communities to feed themselves. And I think that is a subject, as Eden said, that uh, we probably could be addressing in a different forum, but it's so critical because by relying on a, an external uh, you know, uh, 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 agency to uh, provide food to families, the dignity of these families is being violated. And really, it is not right that that should be the case. So we have to find a way of making it possible uh, for communities to feed themselves and in the process be able also to preserve uh, their, own their own dignities as individuals. For now, I think it is going to be necessary that we let you know that as Barclays Bank, we are going to be giving a total investment of some 45 million Kenya shillings towards this initiative. <laughs> this contribution is going to be addressing, obviously, the immediate uh, needs of the affected uh, communities within our country. But more importantly, it is going to be addressing the medium to long term uh, uh, solutions in terms of sustainability. And in this regard, we hope to work along with uh, uh, the Kenya Red Cross, as well as the other stakeholders, to really try to find uh, long term solutions uh, to the challenges around um, uh, drought and uh, how then that can be mitigated in a manner that, as I said, we can preserve the dignity of the individual, individuals within the communities that get affected. But I think more importantly, uh, so that we can then also be able to uh, t uh, uh, turn our attention to other equally important tasks that we must face as a nation. Uh, it basically now remains for me to thank uh, Kenya Red Cross, who have been our partners for quite some time uh, in managing some of these challenges. And also, as we thank uh, the, the, the Media Owners Association and the other stakeholders in this country in uh, positively responding to the challenges uh, that we are facing as a, as a country, because together uh, we will make a difference. Thank you very much for uh, attending this function and uh, we look forward to interacting with you in other fora. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Golet, uh, if you can step forward, Aidan and Chair. Uh, 
and we will invite our chairman to sign the check of uh, 45 million shillings. We will note that 34 million of uh, this money will be going towards the Kenya Red Cross for the Kenyans for Kenyans campaign. That's 34 million shillings will be going to Kenya and 11 million shillings will be going to the other Horn of Africa countries. Makofi Tafadali is the word of money. So really at this point, we would just like to give a quick vote of thanks after which we'll have a separate photo session. Um, let me just start off by thanking our PR partners. Uh, Aiden had mentioned that Kenyans for Kenyans is strongly supported by the Junadine team. So we